Solving quadratics by completing the square. This one jumps off from our square root method that we learned last lesson. Take a look. We're going to talk about a perfect square trinomial. What does that mean? Well, look at the one we have written. x squared plus 14x plus 49. Let's see why we call it a perfect square trinomial. Think about factoring this. So 1x, 1x, 7, 7, and it gives us 14 in the middle. But look, I kind of already recognize that. So let's talk about what we could have done instead. I know it's going to be a binomial times a binomial, and they're going to match. So I need a number plus itself to add to 14. Well, we know, of course, that is 7 and 7. And then, where is this 49 coming from? Well, of course, 7 times 7 is 49. Check. So instead of writing x plus 7 times x plus 7, it's way easier to just say x plus 7 quantity squared. And of course, we're leading you into the idea that if it's x plus 7 quantity squared, that's a lot like solving by square roots last lesson. Let's look at a full example. We need to rewrite it as a binomial squared. Once again, what do I want to go in these two spots? I need something plus itself that adds to 10. And of course, that's just going to be a 5 and a 5. So really, what are we doing there? 10 divided by 2, right? 5 plus 5. 10. Where's the 25 coming from? Well, of course, multiplying the negative 5 times negative 5, and that gives me positive 25. Then I'll condense, rewrite it as a binomial squared. At that point, we're just back at last lesson. Square root both sides, and last step, we'll add the 5 over. It is conventional to put that 5 in front of the positive negative root 3. So let's keep this up. For this one, I have a perfect square trinomial equals 9 fourths. So I'm going to want a number that added to itself equals 4. So what? 2 and 2? Two? X plus 2. X plus 2 because I want that positive 4. And let's check and make sure that that multiplies to this 4 out here. 2 times 2. Yep, it's going to multiply to that 4. Okay, so now I can rewrite that as 1 binomial squared. So X plus 2 squared equals 9 fourths. And from there, I'm set up to solve like last lesson. So I got negative 7 halves and negative 1 half. Can you follow the steps and do this next one? Give it a try. All right, let's look at this next one. What's different about this one compared to the other two we've done? A is not 1. I have this 2 out in front, so what could I do? Well, since, since this is an equation, it's a trinomial equals 34. Technically, I'm allowed to divide everything by two, but I have to do it everywhere. You cannot, cannot do this with expressions. It has to be an equation. Now that A is one, you are ready to do this like the other two. Give it a go. Check this out. I ended up getting x minus 4 equals positive or negative square root of 17. Well, that's not a perfect square and I can't simplify it. So I just added the 4 and wrote my final answer as 4 plus or minus square root of 17. As long as we understand that that's two solutions. So what happens if we don't have a perfect square trinomial to start with? Well, we make it happen. So let's just practice perfect square trinomials. We have x squared minus 20x plus what? Well, let's do what we did before, binomial times binomial. We know it's going to be x times x to give me x squared. And then what do I put in there? Well, I need a number plus itself to give me negative 20. So of course, negative 20 divided by two, oh, negative 10. Do a quick check now, negative 10 times negative 10, that means we would need to add 100. Our C value is 100. That, of course, now collapses into x minus 10 quantity squared. The next one is all you. All right, x plus 8 quantity squared, and of course that c value was 64 because it was half of b, 8, squared. 
8 times 8, 64. You probably have it already, but practice makes perfect. So go ahead and do 6 and 7. And the only thing a teeny bit tricky is you're going to have a fraction on number 6. Were you tempted to change 3 halves into 1.5? Because I kind of was. But then think about it. 1.5 times 1.5, that's not as easy as just 3 halves times 3 halves. 3 squared is 9. 2 squared is 4. Boom. Okay, let's look at pulling all of it together and doing the entire completing the square process. So I start looking at this one and it's x squared minus 20x plus seven. I can quickly tell that that seven is not the number we need. So I'm going to subtract it, move it over, but leave a spot for the new C that I'm going to introduce for my perfect square trinomial. That's the first step for our setup of completing the square. On the left-hand side, what will I need to add to that in order to complete the square. Well, we already did it above. But whoa, 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 we have an equation now. If I add something to the left, I better add it to the right. Negative seven plus 193. Let's collapse our binomial into x minus 10 quantity squared equals 93. Then we're back to just square rooting and we're set to go. But wait. Miss Ryan, do you notice something right now? Well, graphically, this almost looks like one of our forms. Mm-hmm. Which form was it? You got it. Vertex form, right? What if y wasn't zero? Then we could just put it back in and have y equals x minus 10 quantity squared, but I would subtract that 93 and move it over. And boom, I know my vertex. Do I also know my axis of symmetry? Yes, x equals 10. All right. We really aren't doing that right now, so we'll undo. So back to square rooting. Let's square root both sides. Remember that we get two possibilities, positive and negative, square root of 93. Ooh, square root of 93. Well, I know it's divisible by three because nine plus three is 12 and 12 is divisible by three, but three goes into 93 31 times. Neither of those are perfect squares, so I'm leaving it. Do enough of these and we start seeing that we're probably gonna leave a little spot in front of that square root 93. I'm going to leave my answer in this form, but once again, if you are not crystal clear that there are two solutions there, then you should break it apart. Let's set up this next one together. So just like Mrs. Peart, I'm gonna add that 15 to the other side. Don't forget to add that space to the other side. Whatever we do to one side of our equation, we gotta do to the other. So what number added to itself comes out to that 10? Well, five, five and five. So x plus five, x plus five. Okay, so what number will I add to my trinomial then? 25. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other, add 25 to the other side. So then I'm able to condense to one binomial squared equals that 40. And now you can solve. Did you get negative five plus or minus two root 10? Awesome, be sure you simplify that radical. So if you accidentally left square root of 40, make sure you do a side note where you simplify that radical. Whew. Look at this one, I have a not one again. Can I divide by that little negative one? Yes, because this is an equation, so let's divide it out. All right, you got it from here. Go ahead and start completing that square. Ah, look what happened. I'm about to take the square root of a negative six. We don't know how to do that, so we have no real solution. No real. Oh, so the solution's outside the set of real numbers. Oh, there's a lot going on in number 11. Go ahead and get it set equal to zero first, and then you can complete your square. x equals one plus or minus two root two. Be sure you simplified that radical. Don't have root eight in my final answer. This last one is all you. Get it equal to zero, complete your square. You've got this. Okay, have you gotten this far? Did you divide out that three? It's an equation, so that was okay. So here I go. I'm gonna move that 14 over and start completing my square. Wait, wait, wait. 
closer look. Oh, you tricked me. I did. I can totally factor this one, and factoring's much quicker than completing the square, so let's crisscross. So I was able to factor, use zero product property, and get x equals negative seven and x equals two. That was pretty nice. 